welcome back to the Bureau XCOM Declassified and my let's play of it. The last time I read Nico, Nico De Silva's file, that's the guy standing by the door, this is apparently my file. I get to find out what I'm like. William James Carter, born 4th November 1920 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, to Beryl and Jeremiah Carter. Education. B.S. Engineering, Indiana University. So, he's been engineering bullshit. Okay. Mal status, widowed. Family. Beryl Carter, Nee Douglas, mother, deceased, 1952. Jeremiah Carter, father, deceased, 1959. Julia Carter, Nee Crenshaw, wife, deceased, 1959. Richard Carter, son, deceased, 1959. I'm guessing something bad happened in 1959 to the family. Professional record. William Carter joined the Army December 17th, 1941, leaving college to enlist shortly after the attack on Pearl Harbor. He saw action in the Pacific Theatre and earned the rank of Master Sergeant with commendations for his service in the Burma Campaign. His service ended on October 25th, 1945, after which he returned to college on the GI Bill. After graduating, the CIA recruited Carter in 1948 as a field operative. His quick thinking and bravery served him well, and he rose through the ranks, earning personal accommodations from both the director, both from Director Hoover and President Truman. He excelled at deep cover assignments, serving for weeks or months at a time in Indochina and the USSR. It's a term you don't hear very often anymore, on both of them, Indochina or USSR. In 1959, during a deep cover assignment in Laos, a fire at his family home in Arlington killed his father. Really? I thought his father died in 1952. Hang on. Oh no, his mother died in 1952. My, my apologies. Uh, I'll get back to where it was. In 1959, during a deep cover assignment in Laos, a fire at his family home in Arlington killed his father, wife and son. However, due to, a due to the communications blackout of his, of his mission, Carter did not learn the tragedy until he returned in 1960. He alternates between blaming himself and the agency for the tragedy, this, as much as anything, led to his drinking problem. Following a string of disciplinary charges in December of 1960, William Carter was reassigned to, to domestic operations only. Continued problems led to a further demotion to administrative duties in June of 1961. Director's Addendum Myron, this one's aggressive, temperamental and defensive, but he gets the job done. I don't recommend him, but the Bureau is your department. If you insist on him, I don't recommend a long-term position. The man used to be a hero, but now he's busy destroying himself. He's not useful for much anymore, except as an expendable asset. J. Edgar Hoover. Ah, J. Ed Edgar living up to his reputation. Apparently. Oh, it's going to take a second. Sorry about that. Knock on the door. Lights. We are at war, and not the one we were expecting. Groom range, 2100 hours. Survivors, six. In just a few minutes, our enemy managed to destroy the primary strategic command center. By 2130, strategic command itself cease to exist. Our combined military forces have been routed. The comms have gone dark. The red phone will not be ringing. And that is why, as of now, I, Myron Falk, am assuming command of what's left of our nation's defenses. The Bureau was founded to coordinate resistance forces in the event of a complete and successful Soviet invasion. That mission remains the same, even if our enemy does not. We now face an opponent from beyond our world, whose identity is yet unknown. But make no mistake, this enemy has crippled us. They have technology decades beyond what we possess. We must make it our own. Their weapons will become our weapons. And when they do, we shall annihilate them. I give you new orders. Survive, 
Adapt. Win. Welcome to XCOM. No, I can help them. Let me help them! Will. 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 Carter. Hey, Will, wake up. <clears throat> what? Jesus, Carter. How is it you look worse than before you went to sleep? I'm fine. And you yelling for me to wake up doesn't help. I wasn't the one yelling. What did I say? Something about a fire. I don't know. I guess after the morning you had, it makes sense. No, this wasn't about that. It wasn't about Groom Range. Well, my guess is you're not the only one having nightmares after this morning. Head shrinking's gonna be a big business after this war. If there isn't after this war. Ugh, Christ, that was dark. Anyway, Falk's looking for you. Wants you in his office, ASAP. The old man say what he wanted with me? Ha! <laughs> Guess you don't know him all that well yet. The director doesn't tell anyone anything he doesn't think they... need to know. Well, I guess you can't really hold knocking off for a few against me. Seeing as how we seem to be in our office and our quarters. Yeah, I guess some parts of the emergency plan leave something to be desired. Ah well, it'll be just like college, right? Yeah, except I stayed in Mrs. Hawthorne's boarding house back in Terre Haute. Had my own bathroom and everything. Well, oh, ain't you fancy. Are you saying something about that radio? Oh, yeah. Cheap thing normally just pipes in the company elevator music, but it's been picking up some weird signal. Damned if I know what it is. Don't we have more important issues to deal with? Uh, sure, that's why I haven't bothered with it. But if someone on the outside is able to broadcast through that jamming signal, well, it could be important. Who would know more about this? Check with Operator Chelsky. She's information officer for the Bureau. Keeps track of communications, arranges contacts, manages what the public hears. The whole deal. I'd better go see what the old man wants. See you later, Will. Okay. Two. Message repeats. Two. Five. Zero. Better make a note of this November. and talk to one of the radio Eight. operators. Nine. You probably ought to run Two. that by Operator Chelsky across Message the hall. Message repeats. Might be important. Two. Five. Zero. November. Eight. Nine. Two. Okay. It made a note for me, apparently. I actually wrote that down on a bit of paper so I'd remember it. Okay, I can speak what to is this it, Will? guy again. I'd better go see what the old man wants. See you later, Will. I'm guessing that's the radio officer person. You the dispatcher? A little more than that, Agent Carter. I'm Chief Information Officer with the Bureau. Information Officer? What does that mean? I oversee the dispatchers, but in addition to that, I also manage our public communications and keep our profile low. And for now, my job is also keeping the public from knowing the scope of the threat. Because rioting mobs of civilians are the last thing we need right now. Exactly. You and your agents contain the enemy's attacks, and my operators will keep the public panic level in check. And if we can't keep the enemy contained? In that case, civilian unrest is the least of our problems, isn't it? Isn't the enemy jamming all communications? Yes. Most broadcasting equipment is facing heavy interference, cutting effective range down to less than 5% of normal. Then how are you... Our equipment is significantly more robust. We're still communicating at approximately 90% of effective range. The best of the best, you know. 
What does the population know? They're worried about the communications blackout, but our operatives in the major cities are keeping them in line. Keeping them in line? You make it sound like they've declared martial law. Nothing as heavy-handed as that. Just a series of emergency preparedness tests. They'll be tense, but orderly. The radio's been playing a strange broadcast. Any idea what it means? I heard. It's probably an automated weather station nearby, but I suppose it might be instructions for picking up a weaker signal. A clever broadcaster could bypass the worst of the jamming that way. It could be survivors. We could bring them in. It's worth checking out. I'll have Operator Hughes run the radio while you give us the data. First set the range to... Set the range to 250. Now the direction? Set the direction north. And the frequency? Set the frequency to 892 megahertz. Checking ultra-high frequency. Nothing. W wait. What is... It's survivors. They're trying to warn others of the attack. Reply. Tell them they aren't alone. We'll do what we can to assist. We'll dispatch someone to help, but we'll also have to make sure they stop broadcasting immediately. We can't risk that information spreading. As long as they get rescued. Well, that was my good deed for the day. Now, apparently I meant to find the old man. I'm assuming that's him up in that office upstairs. The question is, how do I get upstairs? That would be logical, there are stairs right there. How do I get upstairs? I walk you up the were stairs. There. You saw what he was capable of. I did. It's just... His file paints a different picture. Oh, they're talking about me. I what this is. Okay, agents. Let's begin. We going on another wild goose chase, Director? Not this time, agents. Because I brought in an expert agent who I expect to turn the tide. Allow me to introduce your new senior agent, Miss Angela Weaver. Agent Weaver, please begin. Good evening, agents. Now, we have reason to believe our target is... <laughs> is this some kind of joke? I assure you, I do not joke about potential infiltra... Come on, miss. Get back to reception and leave the real work to us, okay? Agent Percy, watch your tone. Director... How many concrete cases of the Outsiders have your agents uncovered to this date? That would be zero. And how many have I uncovered in my own investigations? Two confirmed, one pending. Thank you, Director. If I may continue... Listen up, Agent Percy. Maybe you'll learn how to do your job. Yes, sir. Now, we have reason to believe an infiltrator has compromised military command. Okay, that was interesting. And let's see what else is around. Oh, another bit of paper. Security installations almost complete, Director Falk. The closed, circuits, uh, the closed circuit security system has been installed in several of the facility's main rooms, as well as the corridors. This covers all major sections of the base, and at your request, we have added a monitoring station in your office. The recording options have also been provided, but some of the crew have concerns about installing cameras in the living and hygiene quarters. I've told them I understood, but with, with potential infected, we just can't be too careful. You can expect all surveillance to be in place soon. Pat Barkley, Maintenance. And Special Director of Operation. What's her title? Chief Reconnaissance Operative. Okay. Nice titles they've given themselves. Speak of the devil. Carter. Good. Agent Weaver is afraid you don't play well with others. I tend to see that as an asset. To conclude, all signs show a pattern of systemic interference that cannot be explained by known Come over here, Carter. Excellent I'd like a word. As always, Falk. But I'm not sure what you're suggesting. These activities aren't from the Reds. They aren't from any known source on Earth, so we must examine alternative sources. You mean to say... aliens? It's more likely than you think. We cannot afford to be caught off guard. Oh, okay, Myron. I think you've been working too hard. Take a little time off. Maybe a vacation and... No, listen. This is too important to ignore. My team has already uncovered a half dozen potential cases of outside interfere... No, you listen. 
I have a meeting with the generals in two days, and I will not have you making a laughing stock out of this department. General Deems is already talking about cutting funding, and if that happens, you and your team will be out. Do you understand? <sighs> yes, Director. Perhaps you're right about that vacation. That's more like it. Someplace nice and sunny. Lots of fresh air, like New Mexico. Okay. Certainly different. And he wants a chat. Nothing else worth investigating around here. All right, I'll have a chat with good old Myron Folk. What do you want from me, sir? You're not here in this facility by chance. I brought you here quite purposefully. I've been following your career for some time. Why me? I've been behind a desk since... Well, for a while. Yeah, but you were a hell of an agent before you sat behind that desk. And what's more, I know what put you behind that desk. The brass put me there. Sure, the brass made the call. But it was you who kept yourself there. I don't need another round of psychobabble. I had enough of that from the company shrinks after the incident. It was an accident, Carter. Beyond your control. Right, right, yeah. And next you tell me how I can't save everyone. It's too late for that. But you can save some of them. And right now, that might be enough. Right. Well, I'm with you, Falk. If only because, for all we know, this clown show you're running here is all that's left of our nation's defenses. Then that makes you one of the nation's best weapons. What do we know about the enemy? Very little. Before this morning, we only knew of scattered oddities. We weren't even sure if they were connected. Such as? Deposits of the substance called Illyrium were found in various locations across the nation. There were weather oddities. We received and investigated reports of what we called thinnings. Localized instances where the very fabric of reality itself seemed to be warping, then dissolving. And this was kept secret? From whom? The populace? The news would have generated mass panic. No. The circle was kept quite small on this. What is this place? I mean, when aliens from another world aren't attacking our planet. This facility is essentially fulfilling its intended function right now. It was created to respond to a potential invasion on domestic soil. Do all of these people work here? No. Typically you won't find much more than a skeleton crew here. But certain carefully selected individuals across all military disciplines are aware of this facility's existence. In the case of a domestic invasion, they're under orders to arrive here. I never knew about this place. Well, based on your performance at Groom Range, I'd say that omission was a grievous oversight. What's our plan? Our first order of business is to get this facility running at full capacity. I believe our best shot at defeating an enemy with superior technology is to take that technology from them and make it our own. And we got the facilities to do that? We're still finishing construction on the lab. But we've already got one of the best leading the team, Dr. Dresner. And he won't be doing it alone. I'm in the midst of organizing field teams to be sent on recon and recruitment missions for other specialists. I'm heading down to the ready room. De Silva will meet you there and help you assemble a team. Get moving. Okay, it was all very chatty and everything. Oh, guess I'm not going that way. So apparently I'm going to have yet another chat with this over. He's not in there. Not there. Okay, where am I meant to go for this over? Ah. Oh no, he's back there somewhere. Welcome aboard, sir. What do they look like? I heard some of them look like us. No way. I've seen them. They look like some kind of... I don't know, some kind of monsters or something. You lost, pal? Well, ready room's that way. How's it going, Agent Carter? Yes, Director. I'll tell him right away. Okay. Rosemont University. Yep, there's only the one photo I can examine. Let's have a listen to the recording. Hey, gentlemen. Come on, Will. We need to talk. For this initiative, and I will be your team leader. It's an honor to work with you, Agent Silva. We're all honored on 
Sure, but the director wasn't very clear about what we'd be doing. For the most part, it's what you're familiar with. You're all experienced field agents, so investigation and recovery in hostile environments aren't new to you. You said it best in the service, and it brings all the normal risks of any field work involving hostiles. Yes, but Director Falk said something about unusual subjects? Yes, they might be different than you're used to. You mean we're not going after the Reds? So who are we looking for? We believe we have uncovered a new enemy of the state. We'll be investigating the exact nature of their organization. Oh, understood. I think. You can put us up against anybody in the world, sir. Yes, well, uh, about that. Oh, that was a good line. You can put up us against anybody in the world. Oh, yes, about that. Oh. The old man just called down. Says one of the scientists is missing. Disappeared, along with his research and high explosives. Does Falk think he's gone rogue? Maybe, but we can't risk a panic. Nils is tracking him down, but you need to get a team ready to help. Quick and quiet. Right. Ian, a the rumors true. Some of us have been shut away down here in the war room since the initial attack. Reports of the devastation have been bad enough, but can they really hide among us? Shouldn't that be amongst us? How are we supposed to fight against that? Do we even know if this base is secure? Some of us have already been getting twitchy after long hours without seeing the sun. Rumours like this could re lead to a riot. Lawrence Steiger, Materials Specialist. Okay, and I'm guessing that is a select agents for squad machine. This is a list of available agents. Falk has gathered everyone he could find from all the agencies. All of them specialists, all of them the best at what they do. Okay. I'm guessing that's some kind of scout, mechanic, soldier, and medic. Okay, how do I add them? Oh. Toggle abilities view. Manage agent detail. Okay. He's got seven words. These combat stems. Machine pistol. And. Okay. Let's have a look at this guy. Oh, okay, he might be a sniper. Oh no, he's recon. He's got a sniper rifle. A standard pack. Inflicts heavy damage. Takes less damage in combat. Okay, and a critical strike. Let me have a look at me. Okay, that's equipment. Oh, I got alien exposure. Bonus effects unknown. And I have the ability to heal people. Right, let's go with. Oh, I like that vest color. Pants color. We'll go with black tie color. A nice bright colour, and a shirt colour will go with blue. Good, that's a better look for me. This guy, and time is passing, so I'll go through this quickly. Increased duration of all abilities, mechanical ability and scatter. Okay, what's he equipped with? Oh, he's a shotgun boy. And Dabreski, he looks like a thug. Denival Ops. Okay. I will add you to the squad. Don't know how many I'm allowed to have in the squad. 
We'll take the sniper. We'll take that guy. Oh no, it's apparently... We'll take the thug in that case. Take the squad, and we'll take the sniper. Right. Carter, I chased the infiltrator to the morgue. There's no way out of there. Wait for me, Nils. I'll get your back. I'll wait as long as I can, but we can't risk leaving him with those explosives. I'm on my way. Carter, head through the armory and take a left for the elevator. I'll send your team up to join you. Damn it, Nils. Hold on. Well, okay. Even though there was nothing particularly thrilling about that, I learned a lot during that episode. And I'm going to end it here, and apparently next time I'm going to be trying to save Agent Nils... Nils? Nils? with a team of two that I've just selected. Well, I hope you found it interesting, and hopefully I will see you down the road.